I'm revealing my $30,000 growth stock portfolio. Let's do it. What's going on everybody? My name is Matthew. Welcome back to my channel and today we are talking all things growth stocks. That's right, the day has come. I am finally revealing my $30,000 growth stock portfolio in this video. A few things you need to know before we get started. First, as the name implies, this portfolio is made up solely of stocks that I personally believe will have serious growth potential. Second, I do have other stocks and portfolios that focus on value stocks like Cake and Dan the Man, blue chips like Apple, dividends like McDonald's and Qualcomm, and ETFs like ARK and of course the almighty SPY. Third, I started this portfolio on June 16th, so barely over two months ago. I've been investing for about two years now, but I just started this portfolio, so any gains or losses that you see are occurring over the span of the last two months. That's all you have to know for now, so let's get into it. Now, I've organized these stocks based on what percentage of my account they make up. Some of these stocks didn't start out at these percentages, but they appreciated so much in stock price that they've grown into a bigger position. The dots to the right represent my perceived level of risk for each stock. Dark blue is safe, light blue is not super safe, but I won't lose sleep at night, and red is more risky and speculative. Stock number one. If you guys don't guess this one, then maybe you haven't been following the channel or my Instagram for quite long enough, but we've got Levon Gains, baby. I have 36 shares of Levongo in this portfolio. We're up 83% at the time of this screenshot of my portfolio, and we have a cost basis of 74.44 per share, and it makes up 16% of my growth portfolio. Now I have more shares of Livongo in private accounts and my Roth IRA, but I wanted to keep this cost basis nice and pretty. But again, I do have more shares of Livongo. And for each stock, I'll give a very, very brief recap. I'll tell you what I'm going to do with this stock, buy, hold, or sell. Usually it's not gonna be sell, just a little spoiler. And then we'll move on to the next stock. Livongo is a telehealth company that helps people with chronic illnesses, primarily diabetes and hypertension. They have killer financials, a killer team, and a killer product. I swear this stock was headed to $200 by the end of the year. They had a wowza worthy Q2, but on that same morning of their earnings release, they announced their merger with Teladoc. And everyone, including myself and the market, really did not like that merger. However, we've already seen it start to bounce back, and over the long term, I still like the company. If they do merge, the new Teladoc will be the juggernaut of telehealth, and I think they'll dominate this lucrative space. If the merger falls through, however, then I'm even happier because the Teladoc deal dramatically slows down Livongo's individual growth. I'm holding on to this one for dear life, and it's one of my biggest holdings across all of my accounts. Stock number two is the Trade Desk. We have seven shares of the Trade Desk in this account. We're up 12.5% on those shares, and an average of $418 per share for our cost basis, leading us to 11% of the portfolio. I think this is the ultimate slept on stock. I practically never hear anyone talking about this bad boy. The first time I got into the trade desk, it was still in the 150s, but like my story with Shopify back then, I was trying to trade in and out of these stocks. With this account, I learned my lesson and I am not letting go of these shares. TTD is a programmatic advertising business, which in simpler terms means they are able to place highly targeted ads in front of your eyes. They have advertisers bid for certain commercial spots or ad real estate behind the scenes, and the winner of the bidding gets their ad shown to you. TTD is one of those stocks that many people often forget to mention when they're discussing the streaming wars. And by that I mean TTD is a huge beneficiary of streaming services like Hulu that play ads during their streaming because TTD helps organize those ads. This company is an absolute beast, but I think it's a bit overvalued at the moment. However, that is just the way of growth stocks. I probably won't add any around this price point, but I certainly won't be selling either. All right, stock number three is Facebook. You guys knew that had to come out of somewhere. We have 12 shares of Facebook in this account. We're up 13.8% on those shares with an average cost basis of $232, making it just shy of 11% of the growth portfolio. I've been discussing with people in the Discord for a few weeks now about how Facebook is still undervalued in our opinion. I do have a video that I posted a while ago talking about 9 reasons why you should buy and hold Facebook forever. But of course, I'm not a financial advisor. I mean it is so rare to find someone who doesn't use at least one of Facebook's products every day. Instagram, Messenger, WhatsApp, Facebook. Who doesn't use one of these every day? Any chance I get, I'm buying Facebook on the dip. 
It would take a literal meteor to hit Facebook HQ before I would even consider any of their fundamentals possibly changing. Just don't get caught up in the headlines with this one. For example, the boycott news. That was smart money taking shares on the cheap. No one's talking about the boycott anymore and it barely touched Facebook's top or bottom line numbers. This is a buy and hold forever stock in my opinion and I'm even considering buying more at these levels. I think Facebook is still very undervalued for its potential. Facebook gets a little star. Okay, the number four stock is Maxer Technologies. I've talked about this one a couple times on the channel. We have 120 shares of this stock. We're up nearly 60% at $16.49 per share for our cost basis, and then again, 10.5% of the portfolio. I'm extremely bullish on the long-term potential with this stock. It's currently the fourth largest position in my portfolio, but it definitely didn't start that way. That's because it's up 60% and just gobbled up fifth place. Maxer is one of the few pure plays on the space industry, which I think is a mega trend that not enough people are talking about yet. They specialize in Earth observation and satellite infrastructure, so they have uses for both life on Earth and life in space. The best part about this stock, in my personal opinion, is that it's a comeback story. It was beaten down in 2017 and 2018 because of poor management, and one of their main satellites like literally died, so that crushed their cash flow, and they were forced to take on a ton of debt. But now new management is making significant process at delevering Maxor's debt and making very wise decisions in selling certain assets and acquiring new ones. I've already made a couple videos on this stock, so I'll link the first one that I made when Maxor was still in the mid-teens. I am looking to add more to this position because although it's still speculative, as you can see from the red dot, Q2 proves they were on the right track, but I'd want the price to come back a little bit before I keep adding. All right, stock number five is a stock that I think is actually pretty safe, but it might surprise you, Upwork. We have 200 shares of Upwork in this account. We're up about 3.8% and we have a cost basis of 14.52, making up 10% of the growth portfolio. And before you guys start saying, I just copied Jeremy on this one, I actually started looking into Upwork on my own because I was looking for an editor for these videos. Josh, say hello to the people. I really enjoyed my experience hiring with Upwork, so I was happy to find that they are publicly traded. And by the way, Jeremy, if you're somehow watching this, it's all love. You're an inspiration to me and many others. Thank you for what you do. Anyways, I think the gig economy is really strong. I think it'll only continue to grow. And I believe Upwork has the upper hand on Fiverr in terms of corporate clients, but also just general quality of service based on my personal experience hiring. Yes, I did try Fiverr too. And I actually went from Fiverr to Upwork. They've got great financials, huge market opportunity, and I'm very comfortable with my investment here. I'll be adding if it gets below $14 again, and if not, I'm happy with my position size. Okay, stock number six, another one that I consider to be very safe, some people may disagree, Square stock. We have 19 shares of Square in this account, we're up over 25%, a cost basis of 119 per share, making up just under 10% of the growth portfolio. If you've been following this channel for a while, you know we like Square a lot, and I'll link my video on Square in the top right in three, two, one. Square has two main sides of their business, the small business side of their business and Cash App. In terms of small business, the whole idea is to serve the underbanked. The best example, in my opinion, is Square Capital, which utilizes the data collected from Square's point of sale systems and gives small customized loans to small businesses that are usually too small to get from a large bank. But the serious growth potential in Square, in my opinion, is Cash App, which not only seeks to do what banks do, but to replace banks completely. Let's say someone pays you on Venmo. Now you wait a few days for that to transfer to your bank. Then you send that to your broker and that takes another few days. And now you can finally invest it after about a week of receiving that money. But now let's say you want to take some of that out and put it into your checking account to buy a new jacket. So that takes another few days. So many transfers. Well, with Cash App, everything is in the same place. Your peer-to-peer -peer payments, checking account, and investing account are all in the same app, Cash App. And you get discounts with the Cash Card. This is my Cash Card here. I get discounts with it all the time. If you want to try out Cash App and do some on-the-ground research for your investment in Square, use the link in the description below. You'll get a free $5 just for signing up with that link. Square is a beast, and I hate that I don't own more in this position, but it really just ran away from me. Definitely looking to add to this one. Fun fact, Amazon tried to take out Square's point of sale system with their own product in Square's early days. They failed. Square beat Amazon. 
All right, stock number seven. This one I'm very comfortable with, but I'm not yet ready to say it's super safe, and that would be Mercado Libre, otherwise fondly known as Melly Rock, but not really. We've got two shares of Melly in the growth account. They're up almost 10% for us here. An average cost basis of $1,105, making up 8% of the growth portfolio. I actually just made a video about this one as well. I'll link it right here. And just to give you a quick pitch or summary, I see Mercado Libre as a combination of Amazon Marketplace, Square, and Square's Cash App, but it's in Latin America. Mercado Libre is where you go if you need virtually anything shipped to your house, but they also provide point of sale systems for small businesses, as well as credit lines, and they've got an app that pretty much does what Cash App does, Mercado Pago. It's one place for checking credit and investing. What's special about Mercado Libre is its region. Latin America is home to over 630 million people, but they're still in the early stages of adopting mobile and online uses for e-commerce and fintech. There are some risks with this one, however, from giants like Amazon and potential competition from Chinese organizations. But I believe Mercado Libre does have the home field advantage in terms of local rules and regulations that may be hard to work around for a foreign body. If this one drops below my cost basis by more than 10%, I'll be looking to add. All right, the next one I still see as a little risky, but I'd say it's more on the comfortable side. It is CrowdStrike. We have 21 shares of CrowdStrike in the growth portfolio. We're down about 2% on those shares with an average cost basis of $109, making up just shy of 7.5% of the growth portfolio. We bought this one pretty much at the peak at around 117, but that is why we buy slowly. I was able to get my cost basis down to about $109 after making that first buy. To keep it simple, CrowdStrike is a cybersecurity play. And you guessed it, I have a video about this one as well. It'll be linked right here. I think cloud is going to be a huge mega trend for many years to come, and I wanted some skin in the game, so I settled on CrowdStrike. CrowdStrike is able to replace several legacy vendors with just one of its solutions, and its impact only increases as customers purchase more from the CrowdStrike suite. I am probably going to keep this position as is. I don't think I'll average down any further because I think the hype around cloud stocks is a little scary right now, but I'm not going to be selling this one anytime soon. All right, our third to last stock, stock number nine, Shopify. I marked this one as comfortable because although it is a huge company, I don't think it's going anywhere and I think it is pretty safe. I just think the valuation is a little too crazy. We have two shares of Shopify in the account. We're up over 26% on those shares with an average cost basis of 808. That makes up 7% of our growth portfolio. This stock has no regard for reasonable valuations, but you have to respect what they're doing over at this company. They've created an absolute beast that in my opinion will reach across the globe in terms of their influence. Additionally, as of this year, they've struck some serious deals with giants like Walmart. I don't love how insane these valuations are, but like I've said before, my first tango with Shopify was in the 180s, so I know firsthand just how crazy and strong this stock is. I got in at 808 on this portfolio and I figure I'll let it ride. I did consider selling it for more Mercado Libre, but I think the plan now is to wait for my cash to build and just hold on to shop because I already have it and I like this cost basis. It's a stock I'm not touching for many years to come because I think the odds of this stock being below $800 several years from now is pretty low, but I'm certainly not buying any more today at these levels. All right, we are nearing the end here. We have stock number 10, and some people might be questioning why I put it as comfortable. It is NEO stock. And you might be thinking, Matt, shouldn't this be a risky stock? You know, shouldn't this be a, like a big fat red dot here? Well, let me explain. We have 135 shares of NEO in this account. We're up over 22%, average cost basis of 1171, making up almost 6.5% of the growth portfolio. And I do have more shares of NEO in other accounts. And while we're on the topic, I have a lot more shares of Facebook and other accounts that I forgot to mention, like a lot more. Like this is my number one holding across all my accounts. Thanks to this community, you guys convinced me to do some more DD on NEO, and I came around. Here's my video on why I decided to buy in. I was fortunate enough to get in in the 11s on a recent dip maybe about a month ago and I actually scooped up some more shares at $13 in a private account, top tier patrons were notified, and I liked the position a lot. I don't want to restate my whole NEO bull thesis, but I think the most important thing here is that NEO is backed by the Chinese government, both local and national. Being Chinese myself, I understand from a cultural perspective, I find it highly unlikely that China will let Tesla, an American company, beat NEO, a Chinese company. If the Chinese government wants NEO to succeed, which they do, 
I think Neo will succeed. So yes, this is a bet on Neo, but at the same time, I'm placing a big bet on the Chinese government as well. And many people may see this as a disadvantage, but I see it as a clear advantage. Of course, Neo still represents a lot of risk, so I'm probably okay with keeping my position at about this size. I do, again, have some more in a private account, but not much more. If it does somehow drop below $10 again, that is when it'll start looking really attractive to me once more. And our final stock, probably the riskiest stock we have in this portfolio, but if you take a look, it's up over 38%. I mean, come on, it is Hylion, otherwise known as Shell or Tortoise Acquisition Corp before the merger. We have 36 shares of Hylion in this portfolio. We're up 38% on this position, but we only put in less than $1,000, and we have a cost basis of 1936, making up 3% of the growth portfolio. And before you freak out, yes guys, I do own Virgin Galactic, it's just not in this account. I'm actually transferring it from the other account into my growth portfolio, so yeah, it'll, it'll be there next time if we do an updated version. Hylion is by far the riskiest investment here in my personal opinion, but I really prefer their business model over that of companies like <coughs> Nikola. <coughs> Excuse me. I realize Hylion does not sell trucks and that some people may see that as a disadvantage but I actually see that as something that makes total sense and even makes me more bullish on this stock. You see, I see Hylion as the perfect stepping stone from ICE engines to fully electric. And instead of having trucking companies replace entire fleets, which would not only be expensive, but probably met with extreme opposition from the truckers themselves, Hylion simply requires a quick retrofit. And the best part about Hylion compared to so many of the other EV stocks out there right now is the fact that their business model is realistic, practical, and executable. Think about it, Hylion has their product, they're already installing it, it's super easy to do. Nikola on the other side of the spectrum, of course there's EVs in between, but Nikola has to build an entire hydrogen fuel cell infrastructure across the United States. Well, first, they have to make more revenue than from selling solar panels to their CEO. We're up really big on this position, but I bought really small because I only spent when I was willing to lose. If I had a bigger position, I'd probably maybe sell a third or a half of it at the time of the merger just to take profits from that hype. But since my position is so small, I may as well just leave it be and ride it out. So that's what we got for the $30,000 growth portfolio started on June 16th. And since then, in those two months, we're up 25%, which I think is very good. Very happy with that. And I know a lot of people are going to talk about how they're up maybe 50% or maybe even 100% since June 16th. But the reason why I am so satisfied with 25% is because I don't have to lose sleep over any of the stocks in this portfolio. I have seriously high conviction for every single one of these stocks as you always should for every stock you buy. And I don't have to worry about any hype, any crazy news, anything like that, except for maybe Neo and maybe Hylion. But if you notice, look at that allocation. If you found any value in this video and I hope you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and here we go again, another hint at a future announcement. It's not a happy one, it's kind of sad. So there we go, that's it. If you're watching this point in the video, you are the real MVPs. Don't forget your peace and thank yous.